down. Okay, one second. Go ahead, Shona. All right, so as so, you all are listening to Shona and she's telling you about the various aspects that she had, you know, covered in her last class. And I guess today you're going to proceed with that and be floored more. So Shona, all over to you. Go ahead. Thank you. Boom. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> all right. So um, is it fine if we go ahead and um, start sharing my PPT as well or shall we wait yes, for some yes. more time? Please share. Fine, right? All right. Okay, so um, before I go ahead and share the PPT, which would give you um, kind of a bird's eye view about what exactly do we go ahead and learn in voice and accent. Um, so let me just complete the example that I was talking about. So the blazer is the grammar part of the language. All right. Now, once the person is dressed up, there is something that is still missing. What would that thing be? So that last thing that would be missing is a perfume. So voice and accent is the perfume for a language. It is going to linger in everyone's mind, even once you have left the meeting, the people who came close to you, the people who interacted with you might not remember your name, might not remember your voice, might not remember your diction, might not remember your pronunciation, might have not checked your grammar. How good are you at it? However, something that they would remember is a voice and accent, your accent, which definitely will mark a very, uh, a very great difference when you talk. Because when we talk, we have learned the language, right? We are going to learn the language. We will learn the language. We will expertise it. But when we talk, something that comes out very prominently is our mother tongue influence, MTI. That is what we call it it in our um, voice and accent terms. So when you are talking, it is very prominent. Why does this happen so? We will go ahead and check this when we share the slide. All right, so um, let me just go ahead and start sharing the slide. As I said, it will give you a bird's eye view about what are the different aspects of voice and accent that are considered when we go ahead and train you on this part of language, okay? Just give me a quick moment while I go ahead and share my screen. All right, so here we are. Now, you will find certain definitions here. There's no need at all to make a note of it because we will definitely discuss it further as well. So the first part is to understand what is language? At this point in time, I'm not using any accent. It's neutral accent that I'm using to talk to you. However, when we go ahead and learn further, we will learn different kinds of accents that can be used. Now, language is a system of communication consisting of sounds, words, and grammar, or the system of communication used by people in a particular country or type of work. So now we know that language is nothing more but a medium to communicate with people or with each other. Now, this language is affected, this, this medium of communication is affected a lot or very strongly from the atmosphere that you belong to. How does that happen? For example, Okay. First language, as we discussed in our last um, session also, we spoke about first language. What is the first language? The language that someone learns to speak first. When I say that, first language is always your mother tongue. It always is your mother tongue. Because that is the one language which you learn when you are, since you are a baby, and you grow up learning that language. So your mother tongue will always be your first language. Any other language that you learn later on is the second language, then the third, then the fourth, and so forth and so on. Now, synonyms and related words for the word first language. It's mother tongue. The first language that you learn when you are a baby rather than a language learned at school or as an adult. The, uh, the different languages that we pick up later are the ones 
in the medium that we learn, that we do our schooling with, that could be English or any other vernacular medium. Then the next language is our regional language in the region that we are staying. Then some languages we learn through our friends, our neighbors, right? So this is all about your first language. Now, what is a native speaker? Someone who has spoken a particular language since they were a baby rather than having learned it as a child or adult. For example, all our teachers are native speakers of English. So your native a native speaker will be a person who belongs to a particular area. The language of that particular area is also your first language, which means, for example, if I stay in Maharashtra, Marathi is the state, the language of my state here. And Marathi is my mother tongue also. So my first language and the language of my state is same, is similar. So here I'm a native speaker of the language Marathi. I hope everyone is understanding and we are on the same page. Just um, show me a thumbs up so I'll be assured. All right, now what is accent? This is what this is everything that we are going to learn about. Accent is a characteristic pronunciation, especially determined by the regional or social background of the speaker. Also determined by the phonetic habits of the speaker's native language carried over to his or her use of another language. Now here, our new language is English. Our mother tongue influence which will come through the language which is our first language, which is our mother tongue. So, uska jo influence aiga, hamari mother tongue ka jo influence aiga, English pe. That is what exactly is the meaning of MTI. Accent is a characteristic way of speech determined by the speaker's native language, regional and social backgrounds. Apart from the mother tongue influence, whatever accent, whatever pronunciation we learn, from rest of the people around us, from rest of the languages that we are using around us, is what develops an accent. This is what develops an accent. For example, as we discussed last session also, the pronunciation of alphabets, a very prominent alphabet is Amazon Mary. However, a South Indian will pronounce M as Yem. And we know that this person belongs to South India. A Maharashtrian will pronounce it as ma. He will never say M. He will say ma. We know this person belongs to Maharashtra. So this is what is accent all about. Just a pronunciation of one simple word, one single word tells you or refers you with your background. It kind of tells the other person listening to you that, you know, you belong to this particular region or you belong to this particular mother tongue. A distinctive way of pronouncing a language, especially one associated with a particular country, area, or social class. Now, when I use the word, we already discussed about country, area. Now, let us talk about class. When I say social class, what do I refer to? What I refer to here is, for example, unfortunately, our society is distributed or is categorized into different social classes in like classes, middle class, lower class, upper middle class, upper class, so on and so forth. Now, there is a particular lingo, a particular language that is used by these different classes of society. Let me give you an example. If you come to Mumbai, all right, if you are here in Mumbai, and if you are talking to middle class people, upper middle class people, not upper middle class people, I would rather say lower middle class people, there is a typical Mumbai language. Tereko Mereko. Tereko kya karna hai? Main nahi aara tere saath. Tu apna dekh le. These kind of sentences or these kind of words, which probably do not convey any kind of respect or any kind of uh, absolutely no respect at all when you're talking to someone, you're not giving any, that, that does not mean that those person, two persons who are talking to each other do not share that rapport, do not share that respect. They will respect the other person, but the way that they talk does not reflect it at all. 
so this is this particular language you can refer to as social class this this could be a class a language of a class particular class if you go to lucknow part of um, india the language there is language is same it's hindi it's absolutely hindi however it is influenced by urdu a very strong impact of urdu they would when they talk you would feel amused if you uh, you know if you have a mumbaiker and a person from lucknow in front of each other it will be a real major conflict in their lingo in their language a lucknow wala banda will use the words like hum aap uh, and with due respect with the all the respect that he'll talk to the other person even if he's talking to a baby he will use the word aap even if he's talking to a child he'll use the word aap whereas a mumbaiker will come back to tereko mereko so this this is a major difference and all this kind of uh, differences impact your new language that you learn and it impacts your accent a lot so this is what social class language means now an accent is the way a person speaks the most simplest definition available an accent is the way a person speaks the way a person says a word usually comes from where the person was a child where they grew up hence they sound the same like the people near them when they speak pretty much obvious that you definitely will sound like people around you because you keep on communicating with them you are talking to them people speaking the same language can have different accents definitely mostly when we are talking to different people we use different languages we use different accents even people in the same country can have different accents very much possible again though for example if you go to uk or us the language is same it's english but when a britisher talks it's a different language it's a different vocab it's a different way of talking a different accent that he will use and when an american talks he will use completely different language language still remains the same it's english more so over so when first trying to learn a new language often a person will still have the old accent from their first language that often allows other people to guess which country or place that person lived in before as we have been talking about this right now also your accent tells about your belonging from where do you come from from which area of which country which class do you belong to some examples that we will see she speaks english without the slightest trace of an accent which means she is using a neutral accent with this language english you cannot make out to which part or which country does she belongs to because her accent is absolutely neutral second example is a woman with a very posh accent phoned for him earlier now with reference to this example when i say a woman with a very posh accent it simply means that the lingo the language she used was pretty good she used a good vocabulary her accent was perfect this is what we refer to many celebrities develop a working class accent to increase their street credibility now with reference to this example obviously celebrities have their own um, own aura they have their own world right however what they do is based on what people like they try to maintain themselves in that particular zone or in that particular way they would love to showcase themselves right at university he affected an upper class accent here again it means that this person learned an upper class accent when we refer to upper class accent it simply means that the lingo which mostly upper class people might use 
Now, these are the various types of accents. First is Irish accent. Second, Scottish accent. Third is American accent. Fourth, British English. Fifth is our own Indian English. Next is Australian accent. And the last one is South African accent. Moving ahead, what is the cause of accent? As we have been discussing this, just to sum it up in a brief paragraph, your natural accent results from a system of sound patterns in your native language that you unconsciously learn as you grow up. This is known as the phonetic system. Your accent can change early in life as you are exposed to different accents and speech patterns. So as we gradually grow up from being a baby to a toddler, to a child, to a, a twin, to a youngster, and then into an adult, for that matter, until we die, we keep on learning something or the other. We keep on learning something or the other, right? The same is applicable to a language also. You would keep on learning accents. You would keep on getting influenced with different accents as and when you come across with different people around you, as and when you communicate with different groups of people or different people around you. That could be your neighbors. That could be your teachers. That could be your friends. That could be your colleagues. That could be your, um, you know, just strangers whom you travel with in a train. Anybody and everybody affects your accent. What is MTI? A very, very, very rather extremely important aspect of language that has to be taken care of when we are talking about accent. MTI, mother tongue influence or MTI means the impact of the way your first language is spoken on the second language you are trying to learn. For example, uh, for us, it means effect of your mother tongue on the way we speak English. Now, we have English phonetics in place, right? We have all the alphabets from A to Z. However, when we talk, what we have learned in our schools is Z, the alphabet, the last alphabet, we pronounce it as Z, Z for zebra, which is again incorrect. As we learned last time, it's Z, Z as in zebra. It's a Z sound and it's not a Z. Then, what is accent neutralization? What does that mean? The removal or listening of the mother tongue influence, MTI, or regional language or accent interference is what accent neutralization is all about. It is not always possible that we eradicate completely your mother tongue influence or any other languages influence that you have in a particular new language that you're learning. It is not always possible. However, when we train you, when we coach you for voice and accent, what we do is we neutralize your accent. We, we bring your accent to the minimalist level wherein you can learn a neutral accent, which is understandable, which is understood globally, no matter which country you go, no matter which part of the uh, world you go or you travel, when you talk in this neutral accent, it is understood by the people living there. So you do not have to worry about, will I be, will, will people understand when I talk English? They definitely won't if your English carries a heavy MTI. They definitely won't. For example, if you're talking to an Australian, he definitely will find it absolutely hard to understand you if you are talking with your uh, South India accent. If you say, if instead of uh, in every word, if you say the pronunciation of EM, it will be difficult for him to understand. Yes, sir, I agree. 
right similarly rest of the people for example we indians when we go ahead and join um, thanks to the bpo industry that this um, you know aspect you know came into picture and we learned about it before that before the bpo industry came to india we never thought of anything that is called as an accent we never knew about it what we knew is the english the language that we learned from britishers unfortunately we did not even learn the language completely we did not even learn it properly we just kind of imitated them and we learned it we did not learn it we rather only imitated it that is we that is what we have been doing day in and day out what we do is we learn to call uh, people as sir we tend to call everybody as sir right so we feel that we are given respect to the other person when we say sir however very important however have has anybody of you ever went and tried to find out what is the full form of sir it says slave i remain so now the topic of debate here is are we giving any respect to a person whom we are addressing as sir we are not we are not giving any respect this term sir was introduced by britishers when they ruled us right so for them uh, you know just say uh, just say you have those uh, slaves in mogal in mogal era you have those uh, slaves who are uh, what should be the right word jinko you know paisa de ke kharida jata tha you those uh, those used those people used to purchase and there used to be a slave market and from there you could you could go give money and uh, purchase a slave may that be a female or may that be a male and then you know you can those slaves slaves will have to work for you entire life entire their life they will work for you yeah right so this term sir was introduced for pleasure britishers used to love to listen to this when an indian would say sir slave i remain and we unfortunately foolish people as i always say and i regret use this term day in and day out 24 by 7 365 days to every other person that we talk to are sir please thoda kaam kara do are sir kaise ho aap i'm surprised always because we do not until now knew कि उसका बेस क्या है वो वर्ड कहाँ से आया है वी नेवर ट्राइड टू फाइंड आउट दैट्स दैट्स व्हाट आई ऑलवेज से वी हैव लर्न द लैंग्वेज बट वी हैव लर्न इट इन अ वेरी रॉन्ग वे वी डिड नॉट लर्न इंग्लिश एज अ न्यू लैंग्वेज दैट वी नीड टू लर्न नो मोस्ट ऑफ इट वाज मोस्ट ऑफ इट वाज बर्डन ऑन एस वो हम पर थोपी गई थी लैंग्वेज बिकॉज वी वर Uh, we were under british rule at that point in time and we had no other option but if we had to communicate with them and we had to be in a upper rank we had to know the language and that is how it has been passed over and over and today we have institutions are entire i suppose 75% of the education is in english and still we are not aware of basics like this it's an irony another important rather the most important aspect of accent is this i p a i p a stands for international phonetic alphabet now what is this all about let me just quickly give you a brief introduction this is this refers to all the symbols that we will use to learn vowel sounds and consonant sounds so there are symbols that have been made for easy understanding of the sounds as well as for easy writing because if you all remember last time i told you that english is a language which does not have anything of its own english ke bahut sare words aate hain french se 
ग्रीक से स्पेनिश से इटालियन लैंग्वेज से सो इट्स अ मिक्स ऑफ रादर ऑल दी वर्ड ऑल दी वो कैप डेट हैज बीन कलेक्टेड through different languages from different languages if you might be studying science or something like that you know you would always bump into a word and into bracket it would be written latin latin means so and so latin word so and so so english as such is not an original language to be really honest it is not at all an original language like our sanskrit is right our sanskrit is the base of all other regional languages if we have studied language in detail may that be hindi may that be marathi may that be odia may that be bengali may that be any other language any regional language that we talk in india the base of it comes from sanskrit so sanskrit is the original language however english unfortunately is not it refers to many different different languages with different pronunciations with different sounds different um वॉवल्स डिफरेंट कॉन्सनेंट्स हर लैंग्वेज का अपना एक तरीका होता है साउंड को प्रोनाउंस करने का द प्रोनाउंसिएशन डिफर्स लैंग्वेज टू लैंग्वेज फॉर एग्जाम्पल द वे आई प्रोनाउंस इन हिंदी इज डिफरेंट एंड द वे आई प्रोनाउंस इट इन मराठी इट विल बी डिफरेंट द वे इट विल बी प्रोनाउंस इन बेंगोली इट विल बी कम्प्लीटली डिफरेंट अगेन so now when all these languages who are who are born through sanskrit just one language but still have different pronunciations just imagine a language a language whose entire vocab is being borrowed from so many different languages so now when we write a word for example um i i write a word uh cup if we take this example cup cup then i say c h e s t chest right now cup mein c hai chest mein c hai still when you observe this pronunciation is different this is different why so so how will you write it if i have to break it down into syllable stress or if i have to write it phonetically how will i write it there will be a lot of chaos because what i write is not what i'm pronouncing what i'm pronouncing whatever sounds that i'm using is not what i'm writing so to get out of this mess this ipa international phonetic alphabet was made or was created this particular method uses symbols for us to understand the sound of a particular or a sound in a sound used in a particular word what sound is it regardless what the spelling is written there now the spelling written there and the sound that we use will definitely be contradictory they will not match so to understand this fact that the spelling is different pronunciation is different we have this ipa in place let us see what it is firstly it is important to be aware that while most languages are phonetic that is speech sounds match their written forms english is a non phonetic language which means that the speech sounds do not always match the written form as it consists of words adapted from other languages such as french greek latin german etc so english is an absolutely non phonetic language spellings we write and the way we pronounce it always is different therefore we cannot rely on the spelling of english to teach us how to pronounce words correctly but we can use the symbols in the ipa there are 44 symbols in ipa each of which represents a different consonant or vowel sound in neutral english these individual consonant or vowel sounds are called phonemes we will pronounce this as f 
P is already there with a H sound, so it will be a prominent F, phonemes, yeah? A phoneme is a smallest sound that can be that can make a difference in the meaning of the word. Now, what is pronunciation? Pronunciation is about how we pronounce a word or how we make the sound of words. Speakers of different languages tend to develop different muscles of the mouth for pronunciation. For example, while English requires us to use our jaw muscles a lot, Hindi does not. Remember, we discussed last time that this is the part of our face that we will concentrate when we are learning voice and accent. We, are, we need to look at a person's mouth only. Anything else is of no importance at all. Yeah. When a so person is saying, uh, in yeah. case anybody has a doubt or anybody wants to ask or speak anything, you can actually either type on the chat box, you know, and ask Shona and Shona, you can also check with others if they're understanding. Sure, yeah. sure, sure, sure. Or you might want that... someone, you know, some people to be unmuted and if you want them to pronounce something, we can sure. do that. Why not? Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. We will come to that part very soon. We'll just finish the PPT and we'll, we'll address questions. All right. Um, okay. So, yes. Last time when we discussed, this mouth is the only thing that we are bothered about, that we need to pay attention to. How is the placement of all the organs of speech of a person's mouth when that person is talking, if we are learning accent? So our only uh, concentration should be here on this part of a person's mouth. How are lips, if the lips are joining, are the lips connecting to each other? Are they touching each other? What is the position of the tongue? Is the air blown in or is it exhaled out? What is done? Remember the last time when we used, uh, when we practiced R, we learned to scroll our R's, right? What we did was we used to hold back air and then we used to release it slowly. So this is what is pronunciation is all about. How will you use your organs of speech? How will you understand if it is a consonant sound or if it is a vowel sound? Will you, will you keep the air in mouth or will you blow it out? Everything. Components, consonant sounds, vowel sounds and syllable stress. Now let us see what are consonant sounds. Consonant sounds are produced by blocking the flow of air as it leaves the mouth. There are many ways of blocking the air and various tongue, lip and jaw positions required in order to create accurately the consonants of English. Organs of speech, which are also known as articulators, such as the tongue, teeth, lips are used to create the obstruction of the airflow. For example, last time when we learned to pronounce P as in parrot, what we, what we observed that the correct, correct pronunciation will be when we, feel, when we feel a blow of air on our palm, when I say P. So it's a P with a H sound. And when I say that as P, you will feel blow of air here which means that, is it a consonant sound? Yes, we block the air, we release it. That is how we pronounce it. So consonant sounds are produced by blocking the flow of air using all the organs of speech. What are the organs of speech? Your nose, you inhale air. Lips, alveolar ridge, which is, your, uh, which is a part of your neck inside. Teeth, hard palate, soft palate, tongue, jaw, and your vocal cords. Out of these, all the speech organs, some are passive, some are active. When I say passive, which means that these organs cannot move. They will stay in their own place. For example, teeth, nose. Alveolar ridge, hard palate, and upper jaw. 
you cannot move them, right? Your teeth will not move. They will stay in their own place. When you use, when you pronounce any kind of a sound, they will still stay in their original place. They are not going to move. However, active organs move. For example, your tongue, your lips, your soft palate, lower jaw and vocal cords. Your upper jaw is not moving. Can you move this part of your face? You cannot. But this lower jaw, this part of your face moves when you open your mouth, when you close your mouth. This part moves, right? So this is an active organ. This upper jaw is a passive organ. It will not move. Your tongue moves. So it is an active organ, right? Your alveolar ridge will not move. That is a passive organ of speech. Clear until now? You guys may raise hands so that I know. And as Nehaji said, you, of course, can use the chat option. Yeah. Any okay. doubts, any questions, or you know, shall we proceed? Yes, no, maybe. So people, you know that I'm I'm a very you know big person who needs the videos on. So yeah, after the session, somebody says, okay, after the session, then we can have obviously have questions after the session. So in case you have any questions, you can type on the chat box, guys. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead, Shona. They don't yep. have any questions. Now, what are consonant sounds? Consonant sounds are also further categorized into voiced, voiceless, plosive, fricative consonants. There are 24 consonant sounds in English. All these are consonant sounds. Can you see the symbols here? We will not discuss them. We will not even start because it's like in way too detailed. It's just not possible. See, all these are symbols that are used. Can you see? This is not an F. Though it looks like an F, it is not an F. It's a SH sound as in shoe. Can you see this? Right? This, is, this does not belong to trigonometry or geometry in maths. It's a sound of IPA. It is a TH sound as in thick. These, this is the symbol that, is, that we use to uh, denote this TH sound, okay? Again, vowel sounds are produced when the breath, when the breath flows out through mouth without being blocked by teeth, tongue, or lips. So we are not holding back the air here. We are simply flowing, let it flow out. There are 20 vowel sounds. They are further classified into monophthongs and diphthongs. These are the vowel sounds. Can you see? Now, this particular sound, it's like a eh, as in pet, i as in pit, o as in born. Yeah, just some examples. Syllable stress, I'm sure most of us might have learned in IDQ what is syllable stress. So a syllable can be defined as a unit of pronunciation, a letter or a group of letters consisting of a single uninterrupted vowel sound. Every word can be broken up into chunks of letters, that is syllables. For example, we have orange here. So it's divided into two parts, orange, Table, table, expensive, expensive, yeah. Similarly, we also need to learn word stress and sentence stress. This is also something that we discussed last time, that it is just not the syllable stress that the language is limited to. There is something called as word stress. Moving ahead, there is something called as sentence stress as well. Intonation, remember tie, cufflinks, type in. Intonation refers to the raising and lowering of the tone of the voice in order to convey a range of emotions and meanings. If your tone stays the same for several syllables in a row, you risk sounding monotonous. For example, if I read this again as intonation refers to the raising and lowering of the tone of the voice in order to convey a range of emotions and meanings if your tone stays the same for several syllables in a row you risk sounding monotonous i'm sure you understood the difference the way i read it before was very impactful you learned to listen to it 
you heard it, you concentrated on it. The way I read it for the second time, did you even understand or pick up a single word out of it? You could not because I was in my own speed, in my own pace, and I read it so fast without any intonation being used, without giving you any hint what kind of emotion is at the back of that uh, conversation. Could you make out what am I feeling right now when I read it in the second time? You could not. However, when I'm reading this again or when I'm talking right now, you're understanding that, okay, she is explaining something called as intonation, wherein your tone, your, uh, your volume in simple words matters. You need to understand where should your tone go up? Where should it be flat? Where should it be lowered down? for the other person to understand with what emotion are you talking and what are you talking, what are you pronouncing. So everything depends on understanding of the other person. The other person needs to understand what are you talking about. For example, people who have joined late might just be wondering what the hell is happening here because they missed the first part of it. However, they could still understand something because I feel I am in proper intonation. I am in proper pace. I am in a pace wherein they can understand me. They can try to figure out, okay, this is related to language somewhere. This is this that she's talking about. She's trying to tell me this. If I would not use intonation in my conversation or when I'm talking, you would not love to listen to me. You would not understand anything. You will lose interest then and there. So intonation is very important. Yeah. Now, your intonation will dictate how your listener will relate to you as an individual. Charming or rude, confident or nervous informed or unfamiliar, enthusiastic or tired, etc. So the way I speak tells the other person in what mood I am, in what state I am. If I'm not confident, if I'm nervous when I'm talking about something, what will happen? I'll stammer. I'll use a lot of foghorns. Uh, mm, okay, yeah. You know, these are all called as foghorns. These are used automatically by every individual when the person is nervous while talking. And that happens absolutely subconsciously. Hardly people notice it. The last part, Indianism. What is this all about? Indianisms are commonly used words, phrases or expressions used, which influence the spoken English of Indians. For example, the reason is because this is how we Indians use the language. Just try to relate it. Instead of this entire phrase, the reason is because one single word because is sufficient. How do we say? Just wait. For example, you are at, you are on a in a bank's counter. What that person will tell you at the other end of the counter? Just wait. That tone is to give you an order, which is inappropriate, right? Instead, a much better way is just a moment, please. When a person says this, just a moment, please, you would not mind waiting for some time, right? However, if I say just wait, will it not piss you off? Will you not think what the hell? Why should I wait? Why don't you do your job perfectly and in time? This is where the difference comes. Come again. A very widely used term, come again. If we do not understand anything what the other person has said, we use this phrase, come again. Now, if I go ahead and try to tell you its actual meaning, it's like um, real absurd, real bad. But we are used to say this, come again. Instead, what you need to say is, could you repeat that, please? Could you repeat?
repeat that for me again. Come again. I'm telling you one more time. Do not, do not, do not use this phrase, come again. The actual meaning of it is very, very, very um, shameful, to be precise. It's very shameful. I wish I could, uh, I could uh, tell you, but we cannot. I can't get you. I can't get you. No. I'm sorry. I could not catch that. I could not understand it is a better way to say. No mention. Mention not. That is, we, that is what we hear every time. You say thank you to someone. Mention not. No mentions. It's okay. These are the terms that we use. The appropriate one is do not mention it or don't mention it. Clear until now? Uh, maybe raise of thumbs would help me understand. Yes, people. People alive, everyone. Yes, thank you, Chanda. Thank you, Misha. All right, so this was the last slide of the um, PPT. I hope uh, you guys just had a bird's eye view about what accent is all about and what will you learn when we go ahead further with it. Clear everyone, now you guys can go ahead and unmute yourself one by one and shoot your questions. Yes, we have something here in chat box already. Can you teach us the phonetic way of alphabets? Definitely, we will learn it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I have answered that, Shona. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Okay, Sandhya and Komal Goyal, they have all questions. So just please, please, please. Sandhya, go ahead. Sandhya, you can unmute, yeah. Good evening, Sona. Good evening, dear. Uh, Tell me. Uh, how are you? I'm what good. I, uh, today, what I learned, mm -hmm. the, uh, this is a very um, vast subject. Yes, it and, is. Uh, we, yes, um, we need to practice it. Yes, definitely. It's lots and lots and lots of practice, darling, because it is just not about one sound that we will learn. It's about hundreds of words that use that particular sound. So you need to learn not only the pronunciation of that sound, that particular sound, but you also need to learn in syllable stress, where will that sound be placed and how will it be pronounced? The way we learned in last time, the T sound, T. T, right? If it is at the first, how do we pronounce it? If it is at the end of the word, how do we pronounce it? So it will come with lots of practice, lots of lots of lots of practice and new words that you need to learn. It's just not that if you learn your IPA and you are done with it. A lot yeah. of practice and guidance required. Yes, Komal. Yeah, Shona, I have a query. Uh, you just told me about the accent neutralization. Yes. Right. But uh, Shona, uh, now we are adult, right? So since childhood, we develop one accent, mm -hmm. right? So how mm -hmm. we can mother, neutralize that accent? Mother, there are some tools on which we have to work to neutralize this. Okay. Now, I suppose uh, this question probably is related to last time's doubt also, wherein every other person had this in mind, ki up तो मेरी इतनी उम्र हो गई है तो मैं कैसे सीखूंगी मैं सीख पाऊंगी या नहीं सीख पाऊंगी अभी तो आपके साथ हम बोल रहे हैं बाद में बोल पाएंगे या नहीं बोल पाएंगे लेट मी टेल यू वन थिंग दिस माइट बी अ लिटिल बिट ऑफ बीट गेटिंग ओल्ड इज मैंडेटरी राइट यू कैन नॉट स्टॉप इट कैन यू स्टॉप योर एजिंग वी कैन नॉट इट इज नॉट अ कंट्रोलेबल थिंग हाउ एवर फीलिंग ओल्ड इज ऑप्शनल राइट you are aging aapki no, umar no, badh rahi hai listen no, listen no, no. okay 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 yeah unless you feel that you are old how does it matters no matter at what what's um okay i'm 29 right i'm a coach here okay now 
when I started my journey, I never knew that I would reach here because likewise you, I used to think that you are at least a normal human being. I'm not even physically normal. So it was a real big uh, deal for me to start working, to start going to work, job pe jana and everything was a day in and day out struggle. So it was a big nightmare for me. To be really honest, it was a real struggle for my survival. And even today it is. But then the only thing is a word that Subhash sir has taught you in his vocab sessions. Perseverance. Do not give up. Nothing is going to stop you. See, what will happen, the maximum that, that the worst thing that is possible is you will take time. That's it. अगर किसी बच्चे को जब हम सिखाते हैं नई लैंग्वेज तो वो बच्चा फॉर एग्जांपल एक बेबी आई थिंक कुछ साल भर का होने के बाद बोलना सीखता है इफ आई एम नॉट रॉन्ग बिकॉज आई डो नॉट नो आई डोंट हैव अ बेबी सो आई थिंक एक साल भर के बाद बच्चा बोलना सीखता है आपको सुन सुन के वो बोल आपने उसको बैठ के सिखाया क्या बाबू ऐसा बोल बाबू ऐसा बोल बाबू ऐसा बोल नो राइट यू माइट हैव टॉर इन सम सिंपल बेसिक वर्ड्स पानी Kana, yeah, you know, toy or something simple, basic words you teach a toddler. However, when that toddler becomes a child, he already has seventy-five percent of his vocab build up just listening to you or to other sources of who are talking. That could be a television, that could be your neighbors, that could be your parents, that could be his uh, grandparents, whomsoever that could be. He already has built up that seventy-five percent of vocab, or usme galia bhi aati hai, ha? Aati hai, right? You might have heard your children, you know, just giving a bad word, just like that, and you might be wondering, "Ye isne kab sikha? Kahan se sikha?" So, if a baby who does not understand what the language is, who does not understand what a vowel or a consonant is, can learn, why cannot we? It is. simple komal that we will only take some more time it's only about time it's your dedication it's your practice and certain things that you can uh, you can make a habit of for example when you are talking in english you need to make sure that you are audible yourself for example you all may start doing this practice tomorrow onwards today onwards take a newspaper take a book no matter whatever whatever you land up your hands on that that material should be in english usko lijiye open it up read it aloud loud enough that you can hear yourself you should be able to hear yourself record it when you read it and then listen to it one more time what will happen i'll tell you when you read it aloud you will initially be very much baffled with your pace with your pronunciation of sounds and everything abhi jaisa hai na jaise raw stage pe abhi aap logo ka pronunciation accent hai wo waise ka waise hi rahega and you will read it when you listen to it yourself one more time you will understand or you will be able to relate certain part of it just maybe a little bit part of it to me when i was talking For example, the word that I am using very often here is talk. I do not say talk. I say talk. So, other वहाँ पे जब आपने खुद उसे pronounce किया और खुद आप सुनोगे आपने क्या बोला talk. Then and there, your brain, your wiring will give you an indication that lady, comma, talk नहीं है. शोना ने talk बोला था. Possible? You might say talk two more times, but third time, trust me on this. Third time, you will pronounce it as talk. You will never again pronounce it as talk. You can take my word for it. So this is one very effective way of learning accent. Another another trick that you can do is watch English movies. Watch English movies with subtitles. With subtitles, mute the movie, read it to yourself. Pause. Uh, what they call play back again. I mean reverse. Pause. Go. Then you play it again. Unmute it 
and listen to it and compare what you said and what that person is saying. We are not supposed to learn accent from them. No, dear, you will mess up big time. It is just the way of pronunciation. This, 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 this is important. Ye. हमको उनको इमिटेट नहीं करना है हमने जो गलती पहले की है वो हमें दोबारा नहीं करनी है वट वी आर सपोज टू डू इज जस्ट कंपेयर अ लिटल बिट आर वी क्लोजर समेर आर वी प्रोनाउंसिंग द साउंड करेक्टली बिकॉज दो पीपल देयर समन माइट बी एन ऑस्ट्रेलियन समन माइट बी अ ब्रिटिशर समन माइट बी अ फ्रेंच पर्सन समन माइट बी फ्रॉम सम अदर प्लेस वी डोंट नो सो देयर एक्सेंट अगेन वुल बी डिफरेंट राइट सो वी के नॉट गारंटी Yes, Neha. Geeta is here. Geeta Bakshi is here. She has a question. Yes, Geeta. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, uh, ma'am. Uh, 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 I am Geeta Bakshi. I am teaching Vedic maths. So mm -hmm. I have the problem that I am originally from Kerala, mm -hmm. and now I am in the teaching profession. Mm -hmm. I, I, my accent is very. You uh, earlier said that. Yeah, yes. 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 यही हमारे लिए दिक्कत हो रही है क्योंकि मैं इंग्लिश तो थोड़ा बहुत बोल लेती हूँ मगर जब मैं टीचिंग में आती तो मेरे पूरा सेशन टीचिंग इंग्लिश में होते है मगर जो स्टार्टिंग लाइन होती है या हाउ आई कैन इंटरक्ट विद स्टूडेंट्स या मेरे तो ऑल ओवर इंडिया बच्चे आते हैं या उसमें एस एन का बहुत प्रॉब्लम होता है आई हैव टू प्रिपेयर फॉर द क्लास तो yes. मैं बोल नहीं पाते हूँ एक्चुअली मेरे साथ ये हुआ सब, सबसे पहले मलयालम सीखा फिर जब दिल्ली शिफ्ट हुई आफ्टर मैरिज आई एम हियर ट्वेंटी फोर ईयर्स नाउ आई एम स्ट्रगलिंग विद टू स्पीक इन हिंदी ऑल्सो हिंदी में भी जब मैं बोलती हूँ पीपल कैन रिकोगनाइज मी हाँ आर यू साउथ इंडियन तो इंग्लिश में भी वो आता है हमारा तो मैं थोड़ा सा एक्चुअली क्या uh, मेरे घर में बच्चे वगैरह बहुत दे आर वेरी तो ये यहाँ ब्रिंग एंड प्रोडक्ट है दे नो हाउ टू स्पीक इंग्लिश एंड प्रोडक्ट तो माय एल्डर सन ऑलवेज आस्क मी मामा वॉच फ्रेंड्स 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 का जो सीरियल है वो वॉच करो कैन इंक्लूड योर बट आई डोंट नो दैट इज आई जॉइन द आई डी क्यू सो दैट आई ओनली वॉन्ट टू इम्प्रूव माई प्रोनाउंसिएशन एंड दर्बल स्पीक I you understand my problem. Definitely, definitely, darling. Geeta, let me first of all tell you, you are bang on right place. I am from Kerala. No, it's not about your region that I'm talking about. With IDQ, I'm saying that you are at a very right place, which yeah, will, yeah, yeah, that I know. Yes, I which will I at the end, by the seminar, I know this is the right place where yes. I can go. Okay. You do not have to worry about anything, darling. Absolutely nothing. The part of accent that is that that you're concerned with, I'm sure uh, we will have these uh, this as a part of our coaching as well. So, okay. sir, will make sure that by the end, when you leave IDQ, you okay. are a pro. I said that last time also. When you walk out of here, you are a pro already. Nothing, nothing, nothing can. Stop you from being a pro. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. only thing that we need from your end is dedication, yeah. is lots of practice, and have some faith in us that yes, we can do it, that and we will do it. Too, How can we practice by seeing movies? Yeah, by yes. Seeing movies. As I said, you can watch movies or serials, and you do not have to watch you know boring movies or serials which you do not like or which you do not understand. Don't do that. Make it your fun time. You will learn it more easily. Unmute it. but make sure that these things are with subtitles for example the uh, serial friends it does not comes with subtitles so you will you cannot uh, mute it and you can uh, watch it no it will not make any sense so what you can do is you can learn your pronunciation or the way they talk or the expressions or the intonation that they use through the serial you can listen to them when they are talking you can try to repeat what they said or what particular line a particular character is saying in the same way with the same emotion with the same intonation this you can learn from friends and another thing as i said take a newspaper or anything any readable material in english sit in front of a mirror concentrate this part of your mouth make sure what part are you using how are you supposed to when you will be taught how to use your speech organs you will know 
for which sound, which vowel consonant, which I'm sorry, which vowel sound, which consonant sound, how should the placement of your mouth organs should be, you will slowly and gradually learn it. It will not happen in one day or one month, darling. That's not possible. Because to eradicate your entire influence of so many years is just not possible in one day. You will have to make, you know, repeated, repeated, repeated efforts, conscious efforts, conscious efforts that no, the alphabet M comes here. So I need to make sure that I do not pronounce it as M. I will not pronounce it as M. So this is a conscious effort that you will have to make continuously and you will improve. Trust me on that. Yeah. Yes, Rupesh. Yeah. Good evening, Shona. Good evening. Uh, this is a wonderful session, uh, which Thank I have you. Okay. Thank you. Just, just one query. Uh, sure. I don't know. Sure. Uh, is there any specific rule or uh, the pattern to follow to break any word into syllable? Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 That so we will I learn. Believe, yes, I continue. Believe in, I believe in some of the next classes we have to learn it. Yes. It's uh, it's again, let me be very um, clear with this. It's a vast, vast, vast study, a part of language. You can say around 35% of a language that you learn. So the IPA that, uh, that you might have seen, those symbols, you need yeah. to learn every symbol first. Each and every symbol we will learn. Then we will use those symbols in writing words. For example, just if I like a a sound P E T pet a sound. So say we will make sure that we have an endless list of words wherein the that sound is used. Then we will be able to find out that this particular word may a sound as he use hoga ya it is going to be used differently. Because yeah. as we know, English is a non-phonetic language. So we cannot go by spelling. Jo likha hua hai, uske okay. Now, for example. We say C U P cup. Yeah. Right? We say um uh, what could be much better? Uh G O G O Go. Go. Right? This is one spelling G O Go. Similar spellings are T O two B O do. Any similarity that you found find in sound there? No, no right? Spelling yeah. is same. Tino ka spelling ka structure same hai. G O T O D O S O. So, to, do, go. Completely different. So, here that O sound will be denoted with a different symbol. In all these three uh, words, the O sound will be denoted with a different symbol. That is the uh, you know trick about English being a non phonetic language. <laughs> it sounds difficult it is not it is just that as i said you will need a lot of practice Bas, or kuch nahi. good evening sona good evening who is uh, this Vipa. yeah Vipa, yes yeah i have a question that when i am listening you it's very pleasant when i am listening it's like listen listen and listen <laughs> thank so, you yeah it's very sweet uh, when you are speaking mm -hmm. so I, I am feeling that um, is there any day will come when we are able to speak like you? What is the date today? Today is 30th. <laughs> 30th of May. 30th of May 2021. Please mark this day in your diary. By the time, by the time, by the time you complete your IDQ training, maybe, uh, maybe a month or more that you might need as per your practice your dedication your perseverance and your understanding your capability of you know um, understanding the sounds and then using them you will definitely talk like a pro might be better than me no uh, why no definitely yes for sure i trust sure, you even sure, if you sure, ma'am but but actually i when i am listening your voice that's a very very pleasant uh, the feeling which comes from my side is just listen listen and listen to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I'll do one thing, you know, we'll create a group wherein I'll keep on sending voice clips. You keep on listening. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> no, if we go ahead further, we definitely will have to do that. I will, um, I will request, sir, I will request him to send you the alphabets that we learned last time, ABCD, so that you guys can, you know, listen to it and pronounce it. Yeah, fair enough. I will request him to do so. I'll send him a voice clip and he, he will send it further. Yeah. All yes. right. Do we have any more questions, guys? If we do, you can let us know and we can take your questions. All right. I hope you have any more questions. Okay. I see Chanda both, you know, raising her hand. Yes, Chanda, go ahead. Unmute yourself. Just 20 hours. Hi. We, we know it's here. Yes, ma'am. Yes, tell me. 20 vowels just uh, in IPA. We, mm -hmm. I see that, that, saw that. The 20 vowels. We know that five vowels are there. Those are vowel we, sounds. Those are vowel sounds. The 20, uh, the 20, jo table aapne dekha, yeah, yeah. right? Those are vowel sounds. We have oh. vowels as A, E, I, O, U, okay. right? From these vowels, vowel sounds are derived. Jesse, um, uh, do you understand Hindi? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Of okay. course. Do you know that in Hindi language, we have swar and we have vengeance? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Swar varn, so jo, varn. Yes. So, uh, yeah. swarn varn hote hain, wo sounds hote hain. Right? Like, okay. uh, a, e, e. Yeah. Then we use those with vengeance to form words for example uh, ke jab hum e use yeah, karte hai, yeah, yeah. Ki banta hai. Yeah. similarly on those same terms those are vowel sounds which will be used with vowels yeah. right okay yeah thank you ma'am you're welcome any more questions yes komal Shuna, I have a doubt. You just told mm -hmm. me about the consonant sounds. Now you told voiced and uh, voiceless sounds. So voiced is clear to me. What is voiceless? Mm -hmm. Voiceless sounds. <laughs> <means? laughs> Okay, that? okay, darling, we will, uh, I will appreciate that we do not discuss it now because it is something that uh, I cannot, uh, you know, reduce while explaining and it will might take two to three mm -hmm. sessions for you to understand. Okay. But mm -hmm. just at this point in time, just uh, understand it as yes, there are different parts of it, which you need to learn. It's it's really in depth. It's not in depth. Oh, okay. So without giving examples or uh, just giving you the uh, theory part of it will not make any sense. Right. And when right. what you have understood as voice sounds i'm sure what you have understood is not the correct part of it either so don't go into it at this point right. yeah? okay okay thank you wonderful session so, so nice thank, was. You, thank you thank you yes chandrika one second sure yeah chandrika go ahead uh, man it's a great session thank uh, you the slides to just uh, refresh myself. You, Chandrika, that's complete entity of Shona Gupta. So I would not, uh, you know, promise anything from our side. Uh, so sh uh, it's all up to Shona. So thank you so much. She, she is asking for the slides. Yeah. There's no, <laughs> Chandrika, even if I send, I go ahead and send it across to you. It won't mean anything unless you have someone to tell you about it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So let's go ahead with uh, Neha. Neha. Neha Hi, Neha. Hi. How are you? I'm, I'm fine. Yeah. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm happy to see you all again. Yes. Tell me. Yeah. Ma'am, I want to know that uh, if you send us uh, that phonic sound of uh, each alphabet, oh. I mean consonants and vowels, then we practice in at our home. See, I would not send, send you, the video. Uh, okay, no, let me, let me explain. What I will send you across is the pronunciation of alphabets only from A to Z, the way we did it last time, remember? Mm -hmm. A, B, C, D, so forth, so on. I will send it across to you for time being so that you can at least uh, make sure that you are learning to pronounce them in a correct way. 
right? Sending the vowel sounds yes. or consonant okay. sounds ka video, as I said again um, to this lady that I was talking just right now, will not make any sense and until yes. and unless there is someone to explain it to you, what is this all about when you pronounce a particular sound? Yeah? I'll make sure I send you the A to Z ka uh, audio for sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. It will help us. Yes, it will. It sure will. Yes. Any more questions? Unam Shukla. Okay, so one second. Unam Shukla. Yeah. Unam, you are unmuted. Go ahead, please. Thank you. Yes, Unam Ji. Hi, Unam. Hello. Actually, I don't have queries. Hello. Yes, yes. Yes, you are. Yeah. Hi, Unam. Hello. Uh, actually, I don't have queries right now. Hello. Yes, you are audible. Please go Hello. ahead. We can hear you. Please go ahead. I'm, I'm telling you. Okay. Actually, Kona, actually, I don't want to ask anything because I know all the queries will be solved step by step when you teach us how yes. to pronounce and rub. It will take time. But yes. one thing I want to say, uh, actually, I personally like you, the way you teach us. But you, you make our journey more difficult. Because when we joined the IDQ, we were suffering. We are uh, worried how we speak. <laughs> we are dealing with that. <laughs> and you just sprinkle on our birth, how will we pronounce it? So it became more difficult whether we think about how to speak or whether we think how to pronounce it as well both same time. <laughs> I know it will take time. No, no, no. Confused. <laughs> no, you don't, you don't, you don't have to put them. It's simple as that. It is um, it is very simple. See, when you dress up, okay, do you leave back your jewelry? You don't, right? You, for example, when you dress up in the morning, you make sure that you have your earrings on, you make sure you have wristwatch on, you make sure you have some bangle in your wrist, right? You put on your bindi, your sindoor. Do you forget anything out of it? No, right? Very rarely it might so happen that you might forget a piece of something somewhere, right? But otherwise, you do not forget anything. So a language is similar. You will learn all the aspects of it slowly and gradually, step by step, with all our coaches under their guidance, you will learn any, everything and anything. And then you will learn how to put it in proper form, how to use it in proper form. Once you learn what things you're supposed to use, the next step will be you will learn how to use it. And then the next step will be a little bit of practice and you're done. Simple. Uh, we first we learn how to speak, then we go to phonetic. Yeah, we have. To you will you will learn it simultaneously. Uh, you will learn it simultaneously. For example, in 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 sir's session, he takes a special session for vocab. He gives you superb, amazing new words to learn, right? Yes, so when he will when he is giving you those words, he will make sure that he teaches you how to pronounce them. Right. Or when you learn voice and accent, you will learn how to use this particular vowel sound. How is this consonant sound pronounced? And you will know by yourself that how to pronounce this particular new word. When you break it up phonetically, which you will learn, you will know how to pronounce any word in this world. No matter from which vocab is it coming from, you will know how to pronounce it. You will learn it by yourself. So you do not have to worry about everything will be taught to you step by step and you will learn it step by step. Just make sure that you do not give up in between, that you do not miss out on any step in between. And if you do so, make sure you go back to your coaches and learn from them that, okay, I missed on this part of it. And they are there always there 24 by 7 to help us. Trust me on this. So they will definitely guide you. What is the next thing that you're supposed to do? You will not be left anywhere in between with, with or by us on your own. Don't worry about it. You absolutely do not have to worry about it. You will learn phonetics as well. You will learn language as well. You will learn grammar. You will learn syllable stress. You will learn intonation. You will learn diction. You will learn everything that is covered under the umbrella of a language. Fair enough? Yes. Any more questions? I don't see any more questions as of yet. If you do, guys, okay, Chanda again has a question. Can we take Chanda's question? Sure, we can. 
Sure. Chanda, go ahead. Ma'am, yes. uh, just passive passive organs. How it uh, works in uh, okay. our passive passive organs means your upper jaw. Do you understand the upper jaw? Your yeah, yeah. Yes, this part of your portion, this bone that you have here, prick here. Yeah, prick yeah. here, prick here, prick, prick your face. Yeah, yeah. You find this bone here, from here to yeah. the Yes, this is your upper jaw. Yeah. Right? Does yes. it move when you're talking? When you're talking to me, yes. does it move? Yeah. It will not move. What mm -hmm. moves is the lower jaw. See this bone, this bone. You see this? Yeah. yeah. This bone, yes. this entire, this is your uh, lower jaw. This moves yeah. when you talk. So this is an active organ because it can move actively. This is a passive organ. It is not moving. It will stay in its own place. However, it plays an important role with the help of these moving organs to pronounce every, any sound. Clear? Yeah. So this will remain like this. But presence use kiya jayega. For example, when you talk, your tongue touches upper palate. Yeah. Right? Upper palate yeah. is again what? It's a... Yeah. L, L. Yes, yes, you got it. So these organs, which are not active, stay in their own place, but they help the active organs to pronounce any particular sound, to hold back air or to release the air in a particular format. Yeah. Another thing, palate, palate, hard palate and soft palate. What is that? Hard palate is your... Uh... Oh, okay, okay. And okay. soft palate, soft palate. Soft palate is something that is here beneath your tongue. Okay. Under your tongue. That is called a soft palate. The upper part is called as hard palate. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Any more questions? It's okay. Shanti. Yes, Neha ji. All right, great. So if we are out of questions, so I guess we all can thank Shona for a wonderful session that we have had. Uh, of in course. Fact, yes, and uh, I'm unmuting you again, Shona. Please unmute. Yeah, so thank you, Shona, for the wonderful session. If we still have got any last questions, you can unmute yourself and you can talk. You can ask that. Of thank course, you, you both. And many many thanks for this pleasure session. pleasure thank you chanda ma'am uh, yes chitra uh -huh. uh, hindi mein jaise talavya aur dantastha swar uh, shabd hote hain waise english mein bhi kya koi shabd ko start karne ka particular place hai ki ye aise shabdon ko yahan se start karna chahiye yes there is the ipa the IPA that we spoke about, it is kind of a rule book that you will follow. The syllable stress that we are learning is a rule book that we will follow when we learn accent. Okay. Right. We have to stick to it if we need to learn the accent correctly. We have to stick to it. All right. Anybody else? No, ma'am. Thank you, both of you. And Sona, your sure. voice is really velvet. Mahmali Awaz. Yeah. I, I wonder if you know, Shona, you. Shona sings like Chanda because Chanda sings really well. So I, I cannot know. sing. I am nowhere nearby, <laughs> even to closer to a bathroom singer also. No, 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 no. no. Okay, great, great. You know, but you have a great voice, you know. You Thank you. Great. Of course, you have a great Sona, voice. We want to believe. Sona, ma'am, yes. don't believe because your voice is very nice. So yeah. you are telling lies. No, 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 no. I never lie. I never lie. It's not a part of my uh, persona at all. I tell things face to face. On the face, I'll say straight away. This is this is something I can do. This is something I cannot do. <laughs> singing is not is my nice. <laughs> singing is not my cup of tea. If I sing, it is it will sound like I'm reading a lesson from history. History ke book ka koi lesson pad rahi ho. <laughs> I'm that that bad. I mean, just there's no objective to me being bad with singing. Not at all. Yeah, my voice is touch with uh, it's like one or two lines also I don't know, ma'am. I'm sorry. One or two lines also I don't know. 
singing i i really cannot um guys this is a phonics class so i was just appreciating her voice that's okay let's not pressurize her yeah well, see this was required yeah for singing na Yes. No, let me tell you. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me tell you this. Ah, uh, so Bash sir is an awesome singer. Oh, I just okay. heard him this morning in Kids Batch. He song. He sang two songs. A Bengali tha, which I did not understand uh, anything about it, but it was so melodic. Kya chalo re gaye kya sir? Yes, 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 yes. Favorite ka na har jagah wohi ga dete hain. मुझे भी बंगाली आ गई है ना बिकॉज सर का सॉन्ग सुन वो क्या डार्क सुने चो समथिंग चलो रे समथिंग सॉन्ग सॉन्ग एंड ही ही वन मोर हिंदी वाज दैट कोई अच्छा गाते बता दू <laughs> But he sang really nice. Yeah, I mean, yeah, this yeah. is what his singing is all about. It should be. Yeah, 